I'm often asked how I come up with the topics for these banjo claw hammer related videos. And it's really simple. I think about myself as a younger player, as a beginner to intermediate, and I imagine what advice could I give myself if I was just starting off on the banjo, given 20 years of playing. The second resource that I pull from all the time are my students, observing people in the day-to-day -day throes of trying to come to grips with mastering a craft. So today we're talking directly in that vein. I sat down and I thought, what one piece of advice could I give myself or anybody starting off on a stringed instrument of any kind who wants to play at a high level? And I came up with a very simple principle that I want you guys to think about in your own quest to solve the puzzle that is the banjo. Welcome to Banjo Quest. Before we get started, I do wanna mention that this video is brought to you by the Banjo Quest Project on Patreon. If you wanna find out more information about that, check the link in the description below. This is a great time to join because we've got a banjo bootcamp coming in August that is seven days of live streamed workshops right from my studio that you get to participate in. Also, I'm doing a campfire claw hammer segment for patrons this summer where we take apart a couple of classic campfire tunes and we learn them together with a chord chart, not with tabs. So it gives you a different way of thinking about these old tunes that you could take to any campfire and play along with others. Do check it out, hope to see you over there. So what is this one piece of advice that I could give to my younger self or anybody who's learning a stringed instrument? Here it is, two words, stop stopping. It's very easy, especially when you are in the throes of practicing on your own, especially, and I see this a lot with my private students, there is a tendency to cease motion on the instrument when you're playing phrases or tunes. If a mistake comes up, that causes a big halt, the player resets, and they go back at the problem. But here's the deal with music. Music is a temporal art form. Music takes place in time, and if that time stops, then it doesn't matter how well you fix your problems, the stream of time is broken, and you've failed your mission as a musician. So, the idea here is to stop stopping. If you run into a wall, if you make a mistake, we play through our errors. So knowing that phrase and remembering it, stop stopping, that's, gonna, that's going to give you a leg up in your next practice session. And once you hear that phrase, I bet that in your next practice session, you won't be able to get it out of your head. It's a viral idea, I'm hoping, that will seep into your practice session to make you a better banjo player without a whole lot of effort on your part. But we need to go further than that. So today I've come up with three levels of playing in time that will help you stop stopping. We're going to use an external timekeeper in all three of these levels with the hope that they will prevent you from stopping your playing. First level of playing with an external time source is of course with a metronome. A lot of people think that metronome work is super simple. I've taken a metronome out during lessons with lots of players, some really superb advanced players who've been playing a very long time. And it is a humbling experience to almost everyone. I am still to this day, after being a drummer for decades and playing banjo for 20 years, I still am frequently humbled by the lessons that an external time source like a metronome has to teach me. We do a ton of metronome work over on Banjo Quest. I think it is really an essential building block to excellent musical skills. There are two modes I work with the metronome in. I use common time where every click gets a downstroke. And I use half time where every other click gets a downstroke. Common time gives you a very fine resolution against which to measure your time. So it's really useful when you're doing exercises or methodical slow work. But when you're playing up to speed, when you're playing actual tunes, I guarantee that you will be counting them in half time. Most people just naturally feel that thump on the one and the three of the measure. If you go to any old time jam, you'll see people keeping time with their feet on the one, two, three, four. So you wanna get used to working with the metronome in both of those modes of time. I've got videos about that if you wanna see more, and of course you can head on over to Patreon if you wanna work with me directly in these different modes. The second level of playing with an external time source is to play with your favorite recordings. The advice I'll give here is that you wanna find reference recordings that are conducive for you to play with them. 
Now, that may sound funny. You should be able to play with any recording you find, and I would totally agree with that. But I think if you're starting this process, if you're starting to learn how to play with external timekeepers, like another recording, you want to pick your reference tracks really carefully because some reference tracks are easier to play along with than others. If you reach way back to the 1920s and find some early recordings that you are in love with and try to play along with them, you're going to find some funny things. First of all, the pitch is often not what we're used to in our modern settings, so you're going to have to adjust that and figure that out. The timekeeping could be a little bit more ragged than we're used to in the modern era. So that's also something you need to keep in mind. I think working up to playing with the old recordings is a good idea. I find that playing with newer recordings is a great place to start, and that's usually where I point my students. I have two favorite reference fiddlers that I play along with, their recordings anyway, on an almost daily basis. One is Raina Gellert. She's one of my favorite all-time musicians of any genre. Her website is incredible. You can go, you can play along with her videos. I highly recommend you checking it out. She also has a tip jar. Leave her a tip if you do use these videos. The reason why I like playing along with Raina Gellert's amazing recordings are that they are so clean, her phrasing is just so excellent, and her time is unassailable. I learned so much from the way Raina Gellert keeps time. She's got this easy flow, but it's super steady, so it's easy to hear if you're on or off her rhythms. So I highly recommend you check out her website. The second reference fiddler I have is Brad Leftwich. He's got some amazing albums that I still refer to. Say Old Man is one of my favorite old-time recordings of any time period. It's an amazing album. Also, his band, The Humdingers, they are super amazing. And if you want to learn how to play fast, they are great reference recordings to play along with. His phrasing, again, is super duper clean. He's easy to hear. His tone just sort of cuts above the mix so you can play along with him. So I highly recommend all of Brad Leftwich's material. He's like a fiddler in your pocket. You can just put him on and try to keep up as best you can, and you'll learn a ton in the process. All right, the third way is going to feel very obvious all of a sudden, and that is to get out there and find people to play with. Playing with a metronome is amazing. Playing with reference tracks can really give you a taste of what it might be like to play in a room full of other musicians, but there's nothing quite like the real thing. So I do urge you, even those of you who feel shy, to look around and see if you can find an old time or banjo jam in your area and go and participate. You don't have to go with your banjo, so I would urge you to just leave the banjo at home and go listen to some of these old time sessions and meet the people who are making this music on a regular basis. If you want to prepare for one of these jams, you can also reach out to the organizers and ask them if they have a tune list. That way you can work on some of those favorite tunes that they play, get them ready for prime time, and then bring your banjo another time to actually take it out of its case and play along with people. So these old time jams do tend to have sort of this easygoing, accepting, egalitarian vibe. So even us introverts can go out there, put ourselves out there and have fun. The goal here is to get you to play in the flow easily, comfortably, and have it feel like no big deal to grab a banjo and make something beautiful happen. I think that's why we're all here, right? Is to grab an instrument and create something beautiful. Playing in time is the key to this. So you've got to find ways to stop stopping when you're in your own practice sessions. So it's easier said than done. Take the steps slowly that you need to take to stop stopping. And that's it. I hope this helps you in some small way master the banjo, and I will see you next time on Banjo Quest.
Thank you.